Hello everyone, this video is about replacing failed primary root disk from root mirror in Solaris X86 environment. In this video you will learn about checking the current root mirror configuration and then we will simulate a primary disk root disk failure for our demonstration purpose. Then we will see how to restart the Solaris server with the secondary boot disk. Uh, and also we will see replacing the failed disk with the new disk and then we will recreate and reattach the new disk for the existing root mirror for the demonstration purpose i will be connecting to solaris db server where we have the root mirror configuration and i uh, will be connecting to this machine from Unix sa pc and the existing uh, root mirror configuration is like this in our solaris db server we have two disks disk one and disk two and each disk was uh, partitioned into two slices c0 d0 s0 c0 d0 s1 we also have s7 for the database replicas in both the disks and c0 d0 s0 was uh, already configured as d10 that is the right zero volume and uh, as this one is configured as d11 and this one is configured d20 and this one has configured d21 then by using svm we did the mirror components like this d10 and d20 formed the d1 mirror component and d11 and d21 comes the d2 mirror component you can see this configuration in the demo server okay let's start the demo and i'll connect with my unix sa pc okay right now i am in uh, unix sa pc from here i will connect to our demo server unix d unix db uh, solaris db server i did ssh connection to solaris db server and also i will open the console for this machine okay we already set up root mirror on this Solaris DB server. We already have a root mirror configured on the Solaris DB server and the configuration is this one. We have uh, two mirror components D1 and D2 and they are composed of the uh, two disks C0 D0 and C0 D1. Right now uh, what I am going to do here is I just want to simulate a disk failure that is primary disk failure so that uh, we can see how to boot from the secondary boot disk. For that purpose I am using the command fmt add and I am writing a dev null file to primary disk that is c0 d0 s0. Okay. Now this disk is unbootable because there is no content on this disk what i am going to do here is just i will reboot the machine and see what happens i'm not making any changes i'm not trying to boot from the second disk but i'm just uh, in this machine we have already set up root mirror and we already configured the alternative boot path but still when the primary disk boot disk fails what we have to do and what is the default behavior for that purpose just reboot the machine And go to the console so it directly land in grub prompt the reason here is we have configured primary boot disk as bootable device in bias and when it is trying to boot from the primary disk there is it found no content and it has uh, it uh, in solaris x86 the system doesn't know how to boot from the second device until we manually set into the boot bias path or either we select the boot device during the boot time. So that is the reason right now it is landing on the first disk and from there it is trying to boot from to the machine but unfortunately there is no, uh, no related boot information in the first disk so it is landing in the grub mode. So I will reset this machine once again. And I'll try to boot from the second disk during the BIOS time. That is F12, press F12. And my primary disk is primary master and this mirror disk is primary slave. That is uh, disk number 2. I'm selecting 2. And boot from it. Okay, now we are in uh, maintenance mode. And the system landed in maintenance mode the, uh, because of the insufficient MetaDB replicas. The primary disk whatever failed that does have two of the MetaDB replicas and uh, out of total four MetaDB replicas now only we have only 
two replicas valid and two failed. Uh, to boot from this machine, at least we need three replicas. That is half of the available total replicas plus one. But in this case, we have only two, so we have to go go back into the maintenance mode and delete the two replicas that we already configured on top of failed mirror failed primary disk, so that total number of replicas will become two and available number of replicas will become two and that will that will uh, satisfy the majority consensus algorithm that is required by SVM. Let's boot into the maintenance mode. See, first two replicas failed and we have only last two valid. So let, let's delete the first two replicas. Sorry, MetaDB iPhone I to inquire the replicas. Now we have only two replicas in this machine. Again, select the secondary disk and boot in, boot into the operating system. Because we are selecting the boot device temporarily, so we have to do it every time we boot the machine. Otherwise, alternatively, you can configure the boot device directly into the BIOS of your x86 machine so that it will always boot from the primary disk. But in this case, our resolution path is we will boot into the machine from the secondary device and then we will delete the first device from the root mirror and we will attach a new disk in that place. So I will connect back to the server by using SSH. So the devices D11 and D10 failed. So I have to detach them from the mirrors. D, from D1 I want to detach D10 detach and meta detach from D2 I want to detach D11 ok I want to clear these devices Now, in our uh, machine, we have only one disk as part of root mirror and that is the secondary disk. As a next step, we have to replace the failed disk, that is the primary disk. In, in practical uh, world, what we do, we simply remove the failed disk and we will hard plug the new disk and we will recognize the new disk. That will happen by using the command DFSADM. To remove the failed disk, in real world we have to use either CFG ADM or Lux ADM. Lux ADM used for the most SAS and KC disk and whereas CFG ADM used for the fiber channel disk. In our case, we, we have IDE disk. For IDE disk, we don't need to use any of these commands. That is purely manual operation like removing and attaching and that, is, that doesn't support hard plug and play support. So what I am doing here instead of removing, uh, instead of performing the two operations like removing the failed disk and attaching a new disk, I am just using the same disk because I know the disk is not failed completely. I am using the same disk what we have earlier and I will recreate the partitions and I will make it available for the mirror. And that disk is. So C0 D0 is the, the failed disk. Let us assume we already replaced this disk with the working one. If it is a working disk, then first thing we have to do is create a F disk partition because we are doing this operation on x86 model. So go to format and select disk 0 and uh, F disk and we already have 100% F disk partition because this is coming from the old F disk. If you have fresh disk, you, it is uh, it, it, it by default ask you the question whether you want to create 100% size Solaris disk. So for now, this looks fine. So 
I'll simply quit from this format. And what I have to do next step is I have to replicate the partition table from the second disk to this one. Second disk in the sense C0 D1. That is a working disk right now. Okay. There is a question here. How do we confirm which boot device we use to boot from this machine? Because we we use the F12 and we select the primary slave. We booted this machine. We know which device we used. But after some time, we left this system and someone using this machine and it is working for several years. And suddenly, someone got the question like, which device is actually active boot device in this machine? So there is a way to find out this information in X86. That is first thing is you have to use the command prtconf prtconf by by grabbing the BIOS boot device. By current BIOS boot device is 81. Then what is this 81 meaning? We have to see the BIOS device mappings. Current BIOS device mapping is 81 here. 81 indicates CMD K10. So we have to find out what is this path mapping. See here. So this is all referring from C0D1. So the current active device is C0D1. This is how we find out the current boot device. Okay. Now the question is initiating the the replaced disk with the new content and new partition table then re reattach the um, disk to the existing mirror. We already created the F disk table. I am reinitiating the VTOC table. For that purpose, I am just printing the VTOC table from existing disk. That is C0D1S2. And I am sending this VTOC table to C0D0S2. Next thing is we have to initiate the meta devices. Right, uh, um, I mean, we have to convert the slices on top of this uh, mirror disk into write zero volumes. So we have slice 0 and slice 1 and slice 7 is for the meta db replicas. I will initiate the meta entity command that is d10 for the write 1 volume and I will mention like c0, d0, s0 and d1, d11 for s1. So I, I initiated d11 and d10 right i have to initiate the db also meta db replicas in c0 d0 s7 so we have four replicas and also we have new write zero volumes created on top of the new disk uh, slices now we have to attach these components to the existing mirror so for that purpose we have to use meta attach d12 for d2 it will be d20 sorry it will be d11 so s1 s1 S0, S0. Now these devices are in resync state. Once we finish the resync, we have to install grub loader on top of this. That I will do here. Okay, the meta status is showing all all devices in okay state. That means the resync completed. We'll check the complete status with meta state i20, and everything is in okay state. Okay. The next thing is we have to install the grub boot stage.
command is c0 d1 s2 sorry it is in G, c0 d0 s2 okay boot device installed you can check the boot paths by using e prom boot paths are okay the primary device is uh, already it's cmdk 0 comma 0 and whereas alternate boot path is 1 comma 0 this is the current boot active device but since we are already making that primary device ready so we don't need to change this part so at this level the boot mirror is i mean root mirror is ready to ready to boot okay at this stage we have root mirror ready on this machine we will simply reboot the machine and see whether it is booting in the normal fashion or not i'll connect to the console this is my console See, I didn't change any boot device. This is by default booted from the first available primary disk. So it is back to the normal state. Let me SSH to the server. Just for recap, in this video we have we have seen the procedure to replace the primary root disk that failed from an SVM root mirror and in this video we also learnt about uh, checking the current root mirror configuration and uh, restarting the Solaris with primary and with the secondary boot disk and also replacing the failed disk with the new disk and then finally we recreated and reattached the uh, root mirror components from the new disk.